as usual, I am here to take your question. One of the questions that I've gotten frequently on the comment section and also on my DM for counseling is, Nurse Miss Mary, what is fibroid? A friend of mine had fibroid and she's worried if she'll be able to give birth to children. Nurse Miss Mary, could you please tell us what causes this fibroid so that we can avoid it? Could you please tell us the signs and symptoms of fibroid? Good day everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as the Nurse with the Difference. And I make learning easy and accessible for all my viewers. Today, we are going to be talking about fibroid. Fibroid. Uterine fibroid to be specific. We're going to be talking about a definition, the causes of fibroid, the signs and symptoms of fibroid, and the various types of fibroid. And I'm also going to be telling you the chances of getting pregnant when you have fibroid as a woman. But before we go into details in today's class, if you are new on our YouTube channel, please click on the subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out. For all my returning subscribers, this is Nurse Miss Mary saying thank you. Let's go there. All right, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we're going to be talking about fibroid. What is fibroid? In simple terms, fibroid is simply a growth in the uterus. Uterine fibroid is a growth in the uterus. What is the uterus? The uterus is the womb. The uterus is the place where the baby stays. The uterus is where the baby stays for that nine months. So when there is a growth, when there's an abnormal growth in the uterus, within the uterus or outside the uterus, anywhere in the, around the uterus, we say the woman has what? The woman has fibroid. The size of the uterus is usually a lemon shape. You know your lemon. That is usually the size. That's how I can describe this uterus. It's usually that lemon shape. But when fibroids come, it can increase in size to the size of an orange, to the size of a grape, to the size of a basketball if care is not taken. And the funniest thing about this fibroid is that some women don't show any symptoms. Some women are asymptomatic when it comes to uh, the fibroid. Then that takes us to the causes of fibroid. What do you think are the causes of fibroid? The exact cause of fibroid is unknown. We don't know the exact cause of fibroid. But fibroid is usually linked to age. Yes, it's usually linked to age and estrogen. Estrogen and age. You know, um, during the reproductive age of a woman, which is usually between, let's say, 16 to 15, there's an increase in estrogen level. There's an increase in estrogen level. We women have high estrogen level. And that high estrogen level is usually linked to the cause of fibroid. So as a woman ages from 50, you see that the fibroid start to shrink on its own. This fibroid starts going on its own. So that is why they link um they link um fibroid to what to estrogen level. They link what fibroid to estrogen level. So the cause of fibroid is unknown. Then that takes us to the various types of fibroid. I'm going to be explaining three types of fibroid in this video. We have the first, the intramural fibroid. We have the subserosal fibroid and we have the submucosa fibroid. First of all, let's talk about the intramural fibroid. In simple terms, the intramural fibroid the intramural fibroid, they develop inside the uterus, inside the womb. You can see this womb now, inside. Those fibroids that are inside, they are known as the intramural fibroid. Then the second one is the subserosa fibroid. The subserosa fibroid. The subserosa fibroid, they are located outside the womb, outside the uterus. This subserosa fibroid, they can enlarge, they can grow big and goes in, go into the pelvic region. That is what the subserosa. Then the last one is the submucosa fibroid. This submucosa fibroid, they develop in um, the layer, the muscle layer beneath the, uh, the in uterus lining, the muscle layer beneath the uterus lining. And these ones can enlarge and go into the cavity of the uterus. So we have the intramural fibroid, we have the subserosal fibroid, and we have the what? The submucosal fibroid. 
Ghana takes us to the signs and symptoms of fibroid. Now we're going to be talking about the signs and symptoms of fibroid. The signs and symptoms of fibroid varies. It depends on the location. It depends on how big this fibroid is. So I may have fibroid. Somebody else may have fibroid. But the signs and symptoms we are going to have might be different because of the size and because of the location. You don't expect the signs and symptoms for a fibroid that is taking place inside the uterus to be similar to the signs and symptoms of a fibroid taking place outside the uterus. So the signs and symptoms varies and it depends on the location and the size and I also want you to take note of the fact that fibroids in some women may be asymptomatic some women may not know that they have fibroid yes some women may not know that they have fibroid because fibroid you can leave it there as far as not life-threatening as far as not causing harm to you it can stay for as long as it wants to stay as far as not causing harm to you and some women are what asymptomatic but i'm going to be sharing with you some common signs and symptoms of fibroid so the first one i have to share with you is heavy bleeding yes heavy bleeding you see um yourself bleeding parts soaked up heavy bleeding is a sign of um a fibroid, then prolonged bleeding. For those that are seeing their menses, they start seeing for long duration, 7, 10, 15 days. So prolonged bleeding might be a sign of fibroid. Then another one I want to share with you is bleeding after intercourse. Bleeding after sexual intercourse can be a sign of fibroid. If you know you are having bleeding after sexual intercourse, I would advise you see the doctor. Yes, see the doctor. I made a video on the causes of bleeding during and after sex. For those that don't have the access, I'm going to be dropping the link in the description box below so you have access. Then the fourth signs and symptoms I want to share with you is bleeding between period. For example, you saw your period today like today now, then the next day you see it in two weeks time, you are seeing your period again. That might not be your period. So it could be a sign of fibroid. If you are bleeding between period, every two, two weeks you are bleeding. It's a sign that you could have fibroid and you should see your doctor. Then also painful measure cramp. Yes, some ladies normally have painful measure cramp. But if as a lady, all of a sudden you start seeing this painful measure cramp, it's advisable you see your doctor for proper confirmation on what's next to do. Then another one we have to share with you is difficulty getting pregnant. Yes, if you are having difficulty getting pregnant, normally you go to the hospital, they run one or two tests for you. So if they run this test for you, they will detect if you have fibroid or not. There are other signs and symptoms of those that have fibroid is miscarriages. Yes, because the baby is going to be competing for space with the fibroid in the womb. So when that happens, that can lead to miscarriage. So when you have a miscarriage as a woman that's trying to get pregnant, it's advisable you go do further tests to know if there's a fibroid or anything taking place in the womb. And another one is infertility problem. Some women with fibroid may have infertility problem, which is difficulty giving birth. And also, they may have pain. Yes, pain is also a sign of uterine fibroid. Then I want you to let you know that as the fibroid enlarges, as the fibroid gets big, it might be very big that you look pregnant. Yes, fibroids can be very big to the extent that you might look pregnant. So enlarge abdomen, enlarge tummy might be a sign of fibroid. Especially when you do your pregnancy test and you find out that the pregnancy test is negative. So these are the various signs and symptoms you should take note of when it comes to fibroid. I want you to know that for those asking, can those with fibroid get pregnant? Yes, people with fibroid can get pregnant, but it all depends on the type of fibroid. It depends on the location of the fibroid and also the size of the fibroid. So if you are trying to conceive and you know you have a fibroid, it's advisable you see your doctor. Yes, your doctor will be in a better position to tell you the type of examination to do and also what will be more favorable to you when it comes to giving birth. I've seen women with fibroid giving birth and I've seen women with fibroid having challenges with infertility. So these are the signs and symptoms you should take note of for 
fibroid. For those that are asking, is surgery the only cure for fibroid? No, surgery is not the only cure for fibroid. There are medications that can be taken that will be able to shrink the fibroid down. Yes, so I'm going to be making another video to explain the various treatments for fibroid. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you got value. Now you are able to talk about fibroid, the signs and symptoms, and you're able to know what fibroid is all about. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and also don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. For all my returning subscribers, this is Nurse Mary saying thank you. Bye and see you in our next video.